All right, I was cruising through the main part of town and I saw this. Looks like a boarding house from the early 1900s. I got permission to dig it. Got a hole poked out over there. And we got a guy with a backhoe gonna dig the first two feet off for me. actually say something on them. Vanilla extract. I've never seen a vanilla extract that's embossed in a slug plate design like that. It's a screw top, but very interesting. I was just about to leave town because it's so hot over here, but this is a really rare opportunity, so I'm definitely going to stay and dig it. And there's another type of extract. And I just pulled out a bleach bottle. Not really worth anything. It's a Clorox from about 1930. Alright, I just pried up a bunch of stuff. A worthless juice type bottle. I would have got a St. Joseph's. I could probably get a few dollars for that one. And we got something with the top broken off. Okay, I pulled this one out really deep. I'm digging out the wall. And I found a screw top version of the same thing. And this unusual one. Might have a soda showing up here. Nope. There's a Dove brand from the Frank Tea and Spice Company. Paper label still on it from 1923. Right, I finally found a soda. It's very unusual. I've never seen one like it. Very strange Art Deco design. It says Coco Cola. Bottling Works, Big Spring, Texas. That would probably be very rare, but it has a big crack right there. I don't know if it's a fresh one or not. Hopefully there'll be more of these. I'm sure it's very rare. Well, found quite a few bottles actually. A lot of common junk from the 20s though. This would have been the best bottle. Of course the top's broken off. Just pulled this one out. Swamp Chill and Fever Tonic. That's pretty good for a late 20s bottle. And this embossed one. Screw top, but still don't see too many of these. And then the Heinz bottle. They're very common in the small size, but these big square ones are kind of scarce. Then I got a Scott's Emulsion aqua bottle probably 1919 era of course the top's damaged we got a gordon's london dry gin it's a nice early aqua one and it has the stopper still in it matter of fact it still has the liquid in it if you want to drink it i got this blown in a mold a1 steak sauce and a raleigh's very common, but this one's an earlier aqua variety. And what late 20s hole would be complete without a WB Caldwell syrup pepsin? And a Broma seltzer with the three nubs on it. Well, it was kind of fun to dig a hole that loaded. I probably got about 48 bottles out of it. Felt like it went down about nine feet, but I didn't dig the bottom four feet because I probed it about a dozen times and never hit any distinctive layer. But it was very soft all the way down to the eight and a half to nine foot level. 
So now I'm going to probe for another older hole. And a Listerine bottle. Here's a Tabasco sauce. They're actually kind of valuable. Alright, I got another hole going and I'm already half done with it. It's already produced a couple of Art Deco sodas. And you can see all kinds of bottles coming out really high up. Yeah, it's not often you find bottles coming out at five inches deep. And we've got another one of these interesting extract bottles coming out. And a pharmacy. Machine made and screw top. Alright, i got three bottles showing. That's probably a Clorox. Probably a drugstore. And probably some type of food product. They sure did like ketchup at this place. Well, I have come to the conclusion that this was one triple privy here. Because this one is tunneling towards the other one, and the other one was tunneling this way. And they're both full of 1927 to 37 era. I got a few interesting ones lately. That's considered a poison oh, sharpened beer. And this one is some kind of an ink, I think. It's got part of the label still on it. Bottle, I would think. And probably olive oil. And another one. And this company's still around. Chili powder. This company is also still around. It's the Squib. And Raleigh's. I don't know whatever happened to that company, but they were pretty big in the 20s. Got a Lydia E. Pinkham's. Two women bottles. Blown in the mold, patent medicine. Five drops. Kind of an odd shape. And a light bulb. Quite a large privy. It's about seven feet long and about four feet wide. Way too many ketchups and food products. Way too few sodas and milks. It was fun because it was easy, soft dirt, and there's about a hundred bottles were in there. If you count both the holes as one big one, which they were. Yeah, forget how dry and dusty it gets out here in the southwest. Definitely need one of these. Alright, I was tunneling, digging out the ceiling of the hole. Pulled out a 1915 Coke. No, it's not from Big Spring. It's from Sweetwater. I'll have to check my book and see how rare that is. Well, that just made up for a lot of bad luck I've had because that is an unknown bottle. A 1915 Coke that's unknown is generally a thousand dollar bottle. It does have a lip chip, so maybe it's 800. Maybe 750. I'll put it on eBay and see what happens. Well, I'm having good luck again. Just found a longhorn. It's cracked though. Still, it's a Coca Cola product. And it is from Big Spring, Texas. In mint condition, it'd probably be about a $30 bottle. Hopefully I can still get 60 for it. This trash layer just keeps going and going. It went all the way over to here and eight feet that way. And I still haven't hit the wall. Since I'm finding sodas up there really high, I'm definitely not going to miss it, but I'm going to get all of that over there. Don't want to risk missing any more 1915 Cokes or Art Deco Coke product bottles. So I'm going to keep on working it. Alright, now we're at least 10 feet over. And plenty of bottles still in there. And yes, I'm finding plenty of ketchup still. Alright, found a mason jar. Looks really old and crude. Took a while to figure out what it says, but it's a SRAM. 
And you can see the seams are pretty crude on there. It's probably 105 years old. Okay, this is a test. Do you know what this is? Come on, you know. It is the California fig syrup. You should have known that. I've been thinking all along with this powdery, dry, dusty dirt, it's so easy to sift it. But I didn't bring a screen because I haven't been sifting since I've moved out to North Carolina. But this token was so big, I couldn't miss it. It's just a palm olive token, probably worth five dollars. Finally, I found a milk bottle. But the bottom is broken out and there's no embossing. Oh, I feel so blessed. I found water in the desert. Here's one that's different. It's a McCormick in the shoe fly flask style. Probably could get about six or seven dollars for that one. And it's going deeper in this section over here. So maybe it's yet another privy. Because over here it's only going two feet. Yeah, this is a lot bigger project than I thought it would be. But I'm not complaining. Probably getting about 200 bottles out of this. Although I should be complaining because most of them are ketchups and other worthless types. And I got a cobalt Bromo Seltzer. I got a couple of these now. Not really sure what they are. Are they smaller bleach bottles? And I just pulled this out. Look at all that beautiful embossing. Okay, found another one. Hmm, that's kind of different. First one I've seen today. I think it's the first one I've ever seen. And this is a bottle from where I live. We're pretty close. This is a Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm at least a thousand miles away from there. All right, I'm pretty well finished now. The endless dig is coming to an end. It's getting to be pretty hot. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. About 88 degrees now. Well, it was certainly an interesting dig. Made up for a lot of bad days.